Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the iris pleated t-shirt pattern from Forget Me Not, and then we'll move into a sew along to create this shirt. So this is my first time ever using a pattern from Forget Me Not, and overall, I'm very happy and I'm gonna look to do another one. But as for this pattern, this, I'm wearing the version that is the short sleeve version with the pleats and it is kind of fitted, so I've got it tucked into my Miet skirt from Tilly and the Buttons, but I'll untuck it so you could kind of see here. Let me back up. There you go. So it's a little bit fitted, but not too fitted. Um, so yes, like I was saying, there's a short sleeve version, and it also comes in a three quarters length version that also has some pleats at the end, or you can use plain sleeves, but I say, why use plain sleeves when you can do these cool pleated sleeves. But this t-shirt does fit very nicely, so if you need a plain t-shirt, I say this one is a, is a really good bet. So for me, I had to, with regard to the size, I cut a size 36. Now on the Forget Me Not size chart, I was between a 34 and a 36 based on my bust measurement of 35 and a half inches. And the pattern is meant to have two inches, about two inches of negative ease in the bust, but I wanted something to be a little bit looser and not as fitted, though I would still have negative ease, of course. So I chose the 36, even though it's kind of a rule of thumb if you're between sizes to size down. I decided to size up. So, and I'm glad I did because I really like the fit. I, I don't want it, I don't like things to be too tight on my bus, especially for the t-shirt, it's just my preference. And then I graded out to a size 38 at the waist, which is something I normally do pretty much in every pattern, with every pattern company. And I'm glad that I did that because I didn't want the t-shirt to hug me too much. I wanted it to be a little bit loose, but still have a like, more fitted silhouette. So there we go. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here. So the pieces, everything went well, went together very well. The pattern instructions are very clear. There's nice um, little illustrations and the, the instructions are concise. So I don't have a problem figuring this out. In fact, this looks way more complicated than it is and you will see if you follow in my sew along that it is actually not complicated at all. And yeah, I think that is all like I really wanted to say ab about this. Um, if you want to see more about the construction process, I've got timestamps below um, so you can jump to that technique or watch the whole thing. I also have a blog post with some additional pictures, so I'll link that below. But yeah, I'm really, really happy. I'm definitely going to make more of these. In fact, I'm thinking about hacking it into a sort of t-shirt dress, which I'm really into t-shirt dresses these days. So without further ado, let's move into the sew along. Let's go ahead and take a look at the supplies we will need. So right here, I have some double brushed poly and it's 90% poly, 10% spandex. And I was able to use only one yard of fabric, just with some thoughtful folding. I could squeeze out the pattern pieces with only one yard, but please do consult with the pattern to make sure that you have enough fabric for your size. The pattern does call for fabric with at least 10% stretch on the horizontal grain. Um, you can have two-way or four-way stretch fabric, either will work. Here I have some options for stabilizing the shoulders. I really like to use this knit and stable stretchy fusible seam tape. If you don't have this, you can cut strips of regular interfacing as well. Um, this is one inch wide. Um, so I could go ahead and cut the strips if I wanted. The pattern itself calls for three eighths of an inch strips of interfacing. 
Um, other knit patterns will call for only a quarter inch. So let's see, I have this elastic and it's three eighths of an inch. Uh, this clear elastic works really well for stabilizing shoulder seams. Some people also use twill tape, but please don't skip this part because you want your shoulders to stay intact and not stretch out. And if you skip this part, chances are that will happen. So I've got my thread. I really like to use Guterman and it's just the basic all-purpose polyester thread in white to match. You'll need um, the appropriate needle. So I've got an 80-12 size jersey needle or you can use a stretch needle. Something to mark your fabric with. So there are a couple of dots or I should say squares on the sleeve patterns that need to be marked and I'm using this ultra clean washable marker in what I think is the lightest color available. Um, so just make sure you test the marker on your fabric first to make sure it washes out. These Crayolas are pretty great. They just come out a lot of times with just water and a rag. So these have been really good to me. You'll of course need a tool to cut out your fabric and my go-to these days have been this, uh, my Kai rotary cutter. Love it, really good, or a good pair of scissors and these are also by Kai. So whatever works for you. And to help you with the construction process, you're going to need something to either pin or clip your fabric together. So pins or clips, or if you're a savvy sewer, uh, you may not need clips or pins, but I, I do recommend it, especially because we're going to be manipulating the sleeves and folding them, and pins will certainly help that. So first we're going to start by putting together our So first we need to put together our pattern by printing out the sheets and then either gluing them or take, taping them together. Now I won't go through this process on camera, but uh, you just want to make sure that you've got some paper shears and either, like I said, tape or a glue stick to put the pieces together. I used to use tape, now I use glue stick. I bought a box of these big ol' glue sticks and they work really well to hold, whoa, to hold my pieces together. Before you can begin sewing, you've got to first put your, put your PDF pattern. So before you begin sewing, you of course first have to put your PDF pattern together. And while I will not go over how to do that on camera because it's pretty easy to do, I will just let you know that you need to have, of course, some paper shears and either tape or a glue stick to um, put the pieces together. I used to use tape, but I have switched to glue sticks and I buy uh, a box of these from Amazon. They're kind of jumbo and I just use the side to glue and they last a long time. And I'm never without my handy glue sticks because lately I just kind of only been using PDF patterns. So let's go ahead and look at the pattern pieces we're going to need. We've got the front piece here and we're going to cut that on a fold. And as you can see, I have graded mine out from the uh, arm's eye all the way out to, well, you want to call that the hip to the waist. I graded out from a 36 to a 38 and I did that on both pieces because of my measurements. That what works best for me. And so, as I said, I've also done that on the back side and we're also going to place this on the fold when we cut it out. Um, then we've got the sleeve. Pay attention to the grain line and make sure it's parallel with the selvage. And marking, we're going to have to mark these. You can see the little hole I made with my marker when I marked mine. And there's a lot of little notches on this piece because of the pleating. So make sure, double check that you 
cut notches and you mark this all um, appropriately. And I just realized as I'm looking at this that I need to go back, see, you gotta double check and make sure that you get these circles too. It's not just the squares, but the circles. So after you cut out your pieces, just double check that sleeve piece. And then we've got the cuff. And so I've got the cuff here for the short sleeve because that's what I'm making. And then you're going to need the neck band. And there's quite a few notches on this neck band. So make sure you've got them all on your piece. I did want to point out that if you need to add length to this pattern, it does say to shorten or lengthen here. And that is at the waistline and you can tell because it's narrowest part. But inside the pattern instructions, it says if you need to add length to adjust it at the hemline, and I needed to add one inch, and I did it by adding an inch down here rather than up here where you normally would. And in the instructions, it says to not do it here because you don't want to lose the waistline shaping. So I just wanted to point out that it might be confusing. Um, you know, because there seems to be some conflicting instructions on the pattern piece versus what is actually in the instructions. Okay, so I've got the back bodice piece here and I'm, I've chosen to use my knit and stable tape and the pattern instructions call for 3 eighths of an inch wide interfacing. Um, I'm using this, this is fine. This is really great actually, this knit and stable tape. So what I'm going to do is just cut a piece that is slightly longer than the shoulder seam piece on the back, like so. And it's an inch wide, so I've got plenty here for both the front and the back piece. I'm going to take my ruler thing can get a little wobbly this, this pieces and then I'm going to just cut out three eighths of an inch easy to do when you're using a ruler and a rotary cutter don't think I could live without my rotary cutter oh this is gonna be a little bit tricky because I just want to shave off an eighth of an inch but Ruler and rotary cutter make it a lot easier. So there you have it. I've got these two little three eighths of an inch strips and now we're gonna go to the ironing board and fuse them to the back. Okay, so we've got the back side or the wrong side I should say of the back bodice facing up. You can't tell because it's white so it's not easy to see. Um, so you've got this strip of interfacing or stabilizer and you've got the side with the glue and it's the sort of textury rough side. So you're going to put that face down onto the fabric. And I've cut my strip to be the same length pretty much as this shoulder seam. And you're just going to lay it there right along the raw edge and fuse it down. I start at one end and fuse it just to kind of hold it into place. And then I, let's trim that a little bit. We'll put it, the iron on top of the whole shoulder seam and leave it there for a few seconds or whatever the manufacturing manufacturer's instructions say for yours and little bits are gonna get stuck to the ironing board, so it's good to try to clip them. And then I just let it cool off for a little bit, um, and then you're just ready to go ahead and get these pieces going. Once you have fused your interfacing or you've stitched on um, or clear elastic or twill tape or whatever it is to stabilize the shoulder seams on the back. You're going to lay your back bodice 
and your front bodice on top of each other, right sides facing each other. And again, it's hard to see with mine because it's white, it's the same color, but anyway, they are um, right sides facing each other. You're going to match up the raw edges on the shoulder seams and you can clip them or you can pin them. And then we're going to take this to the sewing machine and stitch them together and the pattern instructions suggest using a zigzag um, at two inch width, two, you know, sorry, two millimeter length, two mil millimeter width, um, and it's a quarter inch seam allowance. Or if you prefer, you can just go straight to your serger and serge them together. I don't do that, I'm just a little paranoid, so I always zigzag stitch my knits and then serge. So we're here at the machine and I've just sewn up one of the shoulder seams. So I'm going to do the other one. And I have my stitch length set at two, my stitch width for the zigzag also set at two per the instructions. I'm going to begin sewing my shoulder seam here, quarter inch seam allowance. Um, and you want to be careful when you start your seams using using something like jersey or another lightweight fabric it can get sucked down into the feed dog so you want to not start right at the edge of the fabric give it some space and then you can back tack or you can place um like a piece of paper or even kleenex to start the seam that usually works as well so i'm going to go ahead and start and then back tack Don't pull or stretch as you sew. You just wanna keep it nice and flat and smooth. After you stitch your seams together, you can finish them on the serger, which I do. Now, it is not necessary when working with knit fabric to do this, but I like to because I just think it looks more professional. So what I do here, I have my Baby Lock Imagine um, serger and just to finish the edge without chopping any additional fabric off, I line the raw edge of the fabric with this plate, this metal piece here, do you see that? And it will just finish the edge without chopping any fabric off, just in case you're curious how that works. Let me try to do it and film at the same time. And again, don't pull or stretch your fabric, otherwise it'll get kind of warped. Totally forgot we have to press. I mean, we don't have to, but I totally recommend it because that way, um, you know, as you when you press your seams as you go, your garment is just going to look, you know, more professional. So now that I've got the seams done and finished on the serger, I'm going to press them towards the back of the shirt. And I am applying some steam here. In case you're wondering, I have this snazzy setup. And that little bag with cats is a weight to counterweight that heavy water bottle. On my IV pole, So that's what I'm doing, just pressing the seam allowances towards the back. And that's it. So I went ahead and I constructed one of the sleeves just to see how it went. And I mean, it, it's easy. It looks more complicated than it is. I think the hardest part is making sure that your fabric doesn't get sucked down into the machine because you've got to stitch these pleats, um, like basically at an eight to secure them and then it it was wanting to get sucked into my machine, so I had to put um, a, I just used a paper towel actually and stitch them in. I need to clean up some of my threads here. It doesn't look pretty on that side, but it actually, I think it came out lovely. Um, so I'll go ahead and walk you through the other sleeve and hopefully it will make sense. So now we're here at the sleeve and it's not as tricky as it may look. 
So I've got my fabric facing right side up and these markings over here are supposed to be squares and these are the circles. So you've got these notches over here and what we're going to do is take the first notch and meet the second notch, folding it. Well, actually it's pleating technically, making sure the raw edges are nice and aligned. And we're gonna pin. Then you've got your third notch here, going to pleat that by bringing it to the fourth notch, same as we just did. And we have one more pleat to make, and we're just gonna do the same thing. Now, you've got your three pleats made, and then the next part is to fold over this piece. So, you see you've got your two circles, so you're going to fold them. And I like to put a pin through the middle and meet it on the other one so I know that they're on top of each other, if that makes sense. And then so once the circles are meeting each other, you're going to pin it. And then you're going to continue the fold and meet, make sure that the raw edges are aligned and that these squares are on top of each other like so. Nice squares? Kind of. Like, so, there we go. Okay, so my squares are on top of each other. Raw edges are aligned. Could even pin. Pin. Pin or clip, whichever you prefer. All right, so you see, does that make sense now? So you just wanna make sure that this is nice and smooth and flat when you sew it. And the trickiest part about this is that, you know, since you're sewing with a jersey or another knit, trying to prevent it from getting sucked down into your machine. I actually put a piece of tissue or actually paper towel under mine when I sewed it and then it just rips away and my fabric doesn't get sucked down into the feed dogs. So what you're going to do is you're going to stitch up to kind of where this, um, and I say kind of because you don't want to, so the seam allowance is a quarter inch, but this for this step, you're just stitching it down so it stays. So when you go and stitch on the cuff, you don't want those stitches to show. So you want to stitch in between where the seam allowance would be. So not quite at a quarter inch. You could do an eighth of an inch. So you're going to go, I'm trying to use this little pen to demonstrate. But you're going to go from this folded edge up to where the dot is and then you're going to pivot all the way down and so to this square and you're going to back tack okay so that's what you need to do first i want to show you what the sleeve looks like when you're done stitching so i just took this off of my machine and you can see my stitching um you might want to try to get a little bit closer to a quarter or this is fine too but you'll notice since i basically stitched at an eighth of an inch from the raw edge that my little dots don't exactly um you know if i'd stitched at a quarter they would have been you wouldn't have been able to see them but it's okay because 
I think it will be okay anyway. Um, so when you open it up, this is what it looks like, um, which is really cool. So you want to give it a press, but you don't want to give hard creases into these uh, pleats. You want them to be soft. So you want to basically make sure that the seam is pressed down without smushing these pleats, if that makes sense. Because like I said, you don't want to have harsh creases right here. This sleeve is meant to be soft. Once you've got your bodice facing up and the, this armhole area is kind of flat, which mine isn't, but we're gonna work with it. Um, you've got your sleeve here, right side up as well. And you're just going to flip it so that it's right sides together. And you've got your notch here on the top of the sleeve cap. And you're going to match it with your shoulder seam. And you're going to pin it. And you want to make sure that when you do, your seam allowance in the shoulder seam is pointing towards the back. So pointing towards the bodice side with the two notches, the double notches. Alrighty. So what I like to do is then take either side, but you're going to match your notches up first. So I'm over here on the back, matching up the double notches. And then I'm going to go do the other side. So this case, I'd go to the front, match up the single notch. And at this point, you do, you're not pulling, you're not stretching. You're just taking the fabric, laying it on top, notch matching notch. Okay. And then at this point, what I like to do is... And I could have finished that one too. Is just go ahead and pin it towards the side seam. And I could do it on this side too. Could have just done it after I pinned, but it doesn't matter. I like to meet the um, the side seams first. And then see this bit in between the notch and the side seam, then you could kind of just make that meet up. And you should not have to stretch it out. It meets pretty well, lines up all on its own. So I'm gonna put a couple of pins in there to keep it together. And then I'm going to work on the sections between the notches and the shoulder seam. And again, you're not really needing to stretch. This is, this goes in rather nicely. All right, and then you've got this bigger section here. And make sure, of course, that your raw edges are matching. You don't have one slipping out. And do check when you're sewing. So once you have this into place, what you're going to do is stitch all the way around that curve at a quarter inch. And back tack at both the start and the finish. Okay, so I finished stitching that sleeve on and after you do that, you wanna inspect it and make sure that you don't have any tucks. And if you do, you might wanna pick them out depending on how bad they are. And then once I was satisfied with that, I went ahead and surged that seam 
Again, you don't have to do that because we're working with knits and they don't unravel. So before we stitch up the side seam, you're going to want to press that seam that we just made in the shoulder towards the sleeve. And the best way to do that is to get yourself a ham, which I have here. And it's an invaluable tool. It's great for pressing curved shapes like this. So I have got the seam that we just sewed right here. This on this side is the sleeve portion and we want the seam allowance to face that way. So I'm just gonna do that with my iron and you'll want to probably put some tension on the sleeve. This helps make it nice and smooth. Add some steam if that helps. It's gonna fog up my camera. But yeah, so just finish pressing. I can't stress enough that pressing as you go is going, it's pressing is just just as important as stitching, honestly, it really is. Once you're done pressing your shirt, you're going to turn it inside out, basically, so that your right sides are together. And we're going to, it might be easier for you if you take your hem and you join them and then you come over here and then you've got your sleeve. You kind of do that. Can you see that? So what we're going to do is pin. And the most important thing with this is getting these two seam lines to match up. And that's what I do first actually is I get them right on top of each other. I put a pin through. I make sure, and then you could kind of check if you want, make sure that it's lined up. I actually like to put two pins in this area because it can shift around on you and you really want these to match up. It just makes your project that much better when your seam lines match up. And then you're gonna wanna, sorry, I'm off camera. And got your little piece here. So now you basically got the sleeve pinned up and you're gonna continue. Here's the side seam, it's right under the, the sleeve, the armpit. You're gonna pin that all the way down. All the way down to the hem. Okay, so it's just so I can demonstrate to you. So you're gonna stitch back tack all the way. Well, it's easier when you pin to pin the way you're going to sew. So if I was, well, when I sew, I'm gonna start here, right? And so my pins should go that way so I could pull them out as I go or if you prefer you can pin perpendicular that's fine too whatever you prefer and we're just going to stitch all the way up the side seam and remember you've got some notches here you're going to want to line those up too line up those notches do, 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 do. stitch you're gonna go all the way up here and you're gonna end at the sleeve. So you're gonna go over this seam line and end right here. And that is going to join up your t-shirt. So you're gonna finish this side, then you're gonna go and do the other sleeve and then the other side seam. And then we're gonna have an almost complete shirt and we're just going to need to attach the cuffs to the sleeves and then the neckband and then hem it. 
Once you have your side seam sewn, you're going to want to press them. And this time, this seam allowance is going to go towards the back. So give your side seams a nice press and we'll put the cuffs on. So before we attach the cuff, we have to prepare the cuff. And here is one of my cuffs prepared. And here is an unfinished cuff. Okay, so we have here, let's see, this is the wrong side up. I know you can't tell because it's white and so, but this is the wrong side up and you're going to fold. Actually, what I like to do first is fold and give it a nice press at the iron. It's giving it what I call a, a memory fold or a memory crease. But after you do that, you're going to take it to the machine and you're going to fold it this way and you're going to stitch your quarter inch. And then once it's stitched, you're already gonna have your fold because you've ironed it and it's there and it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to fold it in half this way, just like this. So at this stage, we pretty much have a t-shirt, an unfinished t-shirt, but still looks like a t-shirt. So what we're going to do is take one of your cuffs here, or your sleeves, and one of your cuffs, um, and we are going to put it on. And the way we're going to do this is put this cuff, slip it over the sleeve, so this is the right side of the t-shirt and this is the cuff, the right sides are out, it's folded. And you're going to find this, the, um, the seam on that cuff and you're going to match it with the seam, the underarm seam, or I should say the side seam really. You're going to match it you're going to pin it so those seams line up. You probably want to put in a couple of pins because as you know, this shifts around and it moves and then you don't have any matching seams. All right. You've got a notch on your sleeve. You've got a notch on your cuff and you're going to match those up. And pin. And then you'll see we've got this space between the pin we put on the uh, seam line and the pin we put at the notch and we're going to want to match up the raw edges of the cuff and the sleeve and you'll see there's going to be three layers because your cuff is folded and then you've got the layer of the sleeve itself you do this. So you might have to Stretch just a tiny bit when you do this, not much. So if you're pulling, then if you're pulling a lot, something's off. You don't need to pull a lot. It's just ever so slightly. And I'm putting in a lot of pens. You know, you put in as many pens as, you, as you're comfortable with. But you really just want to make sure that you're catching all those layers and you really want to check that when you're sewing. Um, sometimes uh, my bottom layer will slip and then I have to redo it and that's not fun. So now you're just going to pin the other section. This is going in really smoothly. I mean, it fits. Don't you just love it when the pieces fit together? Sometimes they don't and you're just... Well, it's harder to get them to fit. And you think you did something wrong, but you didn't. So I had previously sewn this up and I had this little triangle that, well, it's a little tail that hangs off of that, let's unpin it, that hangs off of that uh, square. Um, I sewed it up and it didn't look right. So you know what I do is I just, on the other one, I ended up just 
folding it out like that and sewing it that way and it looked right. Now, I don't know if that's the way it was intended. The instructions don't say, but you'll see when you stitch it up that way, because if you were to, it would look right. Um, so you might want to just pull it out and then kind of snip the tail off. Um, kind of hard to describe, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Just kind of mess around with it and you'll see why I did that. And if you stitch it the other way with it tucked in, you will see that it might not look right. So if you see that, just pull it out. <laughs> Once you have it nice and pinned, this is what it looks like. You're just gonna go take it and stitch your quarter inch seam allowance, two millimeter length by two width on your zigzag. When sewing sleeves, it's a great idea to use your free arm. That's what this is. So I removed the table that normally is on my sewing machine. And if your sewing machine can do this, I recommend it. It makes it a lot easier. So you see, you can just put your, slide your sleeve right on it and then just sew all the way around. It's a lot easier, so do that if you can. Once you have your cuffs sewn on and you can see that I finished mine on the serger, you're going to want to press them, of course, all the way around. I'm using a sleeve board here, but if you don't have that, you can use a roll, I think it's a seam roll, or um, some people, they'll roll up a towel if they don't have either one of these. So you can see here's my cuff and then my seam allowance is going in towards the sleeve. I'm just gonna do that all the way around on both sleeves. And next we're gonna go ahead and insert the neckband. So to put on the neckband, the instruction tell, instructions tell us that we need to match notches on the neckband to the center front and center back. But those are not marked on our pieces and it, we should have done it um, when before we've sewn them together where it's easier to fold them in half and mark, but you can still do it this way. So see, we're gonna bring shoulder seam to shoulder seam. And basically we're gonna find the center front and you can just put a little notch there so we know where the center is. We're gonna do the same on the back. That was the front. Shoulder seam, shoulder seam. Make sure it's nice and even. And you're just gonna give a little clip, not too big, because your seam allowance is only a quarter. So now you're going, it's going to be easy to know where to put your seams. Because with the neckband, we need to match, well, the instructions say to match the seam on the neckband to the right shoulder seam. And then the notches need to match on the center back, center front, and then the other shoulder seam. To prepare the neckband, we're going to basically do the same thing we did with the cuffs, and that's just press this in half and give it that memory crease. Then you're going to open it up and you're going to stitch the seam this way and then once it's stitched you're going to refold it so that you have this loop and then you've got your notches there you go so we're going to pin the neckband on in uh, pretty much the same manner we did the cuffs. So the pa this pattern calls for the seam of the neckband to be matched with the right shoulder seam and then we need to match the notches up with um, center back, the other shoulder seam, and center front. Here is your 
side seam or your shoulder seam and then the neckband seam. So I'm just gonna pin this real quick to show you. And then when you get to towards the back, the center back, there's going to be a notch closer. So there's two notches on, I mean, there's a notch on either side of this shoulder seam. One is farther away than the other. So the one that is closer to that seam is the one that goes to the center back. And you know this because there is less distance between the center back and the shoulder seam. And there's more distance to cover between the shoulder seam and the center front. So that's how you know which one goes to which. So you're just gonna go ahead and pin. First, you'll want to match all of the notches. So we've got what we had. We've got the, we're going to have the seam match the seam, and I'm not being real accurate, I just want to demonstrate. And then you're going to have your center back notch, you're going to have your center front notch, and then across the way, you're going to have your shoulder seam notch match the left shoulder seam. And then you're going to finish pinning in between those, and you are going to need to stretch out a bit. You're going to need to stretch out the neckband. Try not to stretch out the shirt itself, the bodice, um, because then you might get some ripples in your shirt. But the neckband needs to stretch to fit the bodice, and that helps keep your neckband lie flat against your body. So you have to have some stretch in that neckband. So the neckband is a bit shorter. Um, so again, try not to stretch out the shirt, just the neckband. So go ahead and finish pinning all around and then you're going to stitch it up just like we did with the cuffs, the two by two, um, if you will, stitch length, stitch width, zigzag. And we'll see how that looks. So I've sewn on my neckband and finished it off with my serger. I'm going to go ahead and press it down towards the bodice all the way around. Okay, so once you have got your neckband on and pressed, you're going to want to top stitch the neckband um, seam allowance and, well, you're going to want to top stitch Once you have the neckband on and pressed, you're going to want to top stitch the um, neckband and seam allowance down. Now the pattern says this is optional, but I think it is worth it. So um, you wanna make sure that your seam allowance is pressed down towards the shirt. And I have my edge stitch foot on, which this is a number 10 on the Bernina. And this edge stitch foot has this kind of a blade, um, not really a blade, but it's a metal guide that you just place basically in the ditch here, up to the seam. And then I've moved my needle over a few spaces to the left so that my stitches are going to land to the left of the seam so that it's catching the seam allowance and it's helping keep it down. So that's the purpose of top stitching is to keep that seam allowance from popping up. So, oh, I've changed my stitch to a one. Um, didn't tell me to, but I just decided to do that on my own. This is what happens. So you see, keeping the metal guide to the right of the bodice or to the seam, and then my needle is always on the left, stitching down, stitching through the bodice and into the seam allowance. And I'm gonna do that all the way around, making sure that everything is nice and smooth and slightly stretching as needed. Okay, so the final step is to hem. 
and if you're going to finish your um, hem with an overlock or overcast stitch, do it now. Um, what I like to do is use this knit and stable tape. I have it in an inch length and I just like to fuse it all along the edge of my hem. So I match raw edge to raw edge and I just press it all the way down, all the way around. And then I'll go and um, basically hem the shirt. Now you can use a cover stitch if you have that and you don't need this step or you can still do this step for extra assurance. This just helps make sure that the hem doesn't become wavy after we hem it. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this and then we'll use this lovely heat ruler to fold up the hem. Once I have applied the knit and stable tape I am going to use this clover heat ruler to turn up the hem and press it. And the hem allowance on this shirt is 5 eighths of an inch. So with my ruler, I am just placing it and turning up the fabric or the hem up to the 5 eighths mark and then pressing it. I'm going to do that all the way around. This ruler I can't live without. I absolutely have to have it. It is wonderful. So I'll link it below. Um, if you don't have one, you might want to check it out. And I am stitching at a half inch, the half inch mark. Um, the seam allowance is five eighths, so it should catch just fine. And as you're sewing, you don't want to pull, stretch, you just want to make sure that the fabric is nice and smooth as you feed it through. The final step is to give your hem a nice press all the way around and then you are done.